Well, in the second part of the lecture 2.1, we are going to talk about the basic concepts of probability. So we've just seen the movie from Simpsons, which explains us what is a probability. It was kind of interesting and entertaining. So now get, come back to the boring part and write down some definitions of the probability. So uh, let's define some definitions. So a probability experiment is an action through which we are going to obtain specific results. So the rolling a die and observing the number is the probability experiment. Or for example, tossing a coin and getting the heads or tails is a probability experiment. Or we can, we can figure out another type of the like a real, more realistic probability experiments. For example, I can count the number of the students who are sitting here, okay? And I can do this every Monday. And every Monday, the number of the students who are coming here is going to be random. And it, this is the probability experiment. Or you can just go to the outside and sit near the hole and count the number of the students who are coming every five minutes and write it down. It's also going to be the probability experiment. You're getting some number, which is random. So well, basically everything, so all of this action, which is going to give you a random number, random outcome, is called the probability experiment. So what we want in this theory is to value the probability or likelihood of the chances that this, this experiment will happen. So the result of a single trial in a probability experiment is called as an outcome. And the set of all possible outcomes for the experiment is called the sample space. Okay, it's important to write down some notations. So if you roll a die, you've got six different outcomes. Okay, the result of every rolling a die, we're going to call as an outcome. So what kind of outcomes you can have? One, two, three, four, five, six. And if we just put all of these outcomes all together and create a set, this set is going to be called as a sample space. Okay. okay. So we didn't know the sample space was the capital letter omega, so this is called omega. And then we're going to write down the all possible outcomes of your probability experiment. If this is simply the rolling a die, it is going to contain six outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. If, for example, this is the uh, tossing a coin, it is going to be uh, heads or tails. Well, let's create a little bit more complicated sample space. Uh, so it can be that, like a realistic sample cases, like uh, the number of the students who are coming to this, to this hall. So if our group has 40 students, then the sample space is going to contain all the numbers from zero to the 40, right? Um, I mean, it is possible that no students will come to the, to the lecture, okay? Cool. So if now, if you toss the coin twice, what kind of possibilities you might have? So, so let's say our experiment is a, not just tossing a coin one times. Our experiment is I'm going to toss the coin twice and I'm going to write down the number, okay, or the letters. So this is also the probability experiment and I would like to write down its sample space. So could you please tell me which exactly, what, what, what kind of outputs the sample space contains for this experiment? Tossing a coin two times. It's going to be hats, hats, head, tails, tails, hats, tails, tails. Right? So actually, the sample space contains all of the possible outcomes of your probability experiment. Okay. A set of all possible outcomes is the sample space. So we just wrote down that the sample space for rolling a die is omega is equal to the numbers from 1 to the 6. An event, so could you please write this down? The event is a definition. The event is a set which consists of some items from the sample space. Or actually, event is going to be just subset of the sample space. Okay? So we define the subsets now. So some event is going to be just the some items which we're going to choose from the sample space. Simple event is an event that consists of the single outcome. For example, you can create a sample space of rolling a die. It is going to be the numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you can create the events. So let's say event A, which is going to be subset of the sample space, contains just one. Or event B, which is going to be also subset of the sample space, contains only five. Okay? So you see, so those numbers here, one or five, are just taken from the sample space, okay? 
So here are the sing simple events, which contains only a single item from the simple space, but they might be complicated events as well, like you might have like an event C, which contains two numbers, three and four. Okay, complicated event. So the here A and B are the simple events, and C is a complicated event. So what we want is, we would like to evaluate the probability of those events. What is the probability of the A? What is the probability of the B? Or what is the probability of the C? Okay? And theoretically, or we, sometimes we call this classically as well, so we are going to calculate the probability of some event E by just counting the number of the items in the event E and just divide this to the number of the items in the, in the, in the sample space. Okay? So this is how we're going to do this classically. So let's say for rolling a die, your sample space consists of the six numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's say I would like to figure out what is the probability of event A. What is the probability? I roll a die and I obtain one, okay? Or let's say one and two. One and two, or two, sorry. One or two. So what is the probability that you roll a die and obtain one or two? Okay? So according to this formula, what you have to do is you need to count the number of the items here, which is two, right? And then just count the number of the items here, which is six, and just divide. Okay? So this is going to be here. Probability of event A is going to be simply two divided to the six. This is how, this is the classical approach of calculating the probabilities, okay? We can, we can, we can try another, another example. So let's say um, you are going to toss the coin twice, okay, or three times, or let's say four times. Your sample space, tw to toss the coin four times. So what kind of possibilities you, can, you might have? Like H, 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 H. H, 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 T, sorry, and so on. And now let's say your event is going to be when you just get H, 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 H. Could you please evaluate the probability of the B? So you toss the coin four times, okay? And then you might have different options. For example, hats, 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 hats. In four of the four cases, you toss the coin, you've got hats. You toss the coin, you've got a hat. You've tossed the coin, you hats. You've got you've tossed the coin, coin, and you've got a hat. Hats, 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 hats. Or hats, 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 tails, and so on. All of the possible outcomes of your experiment, which is tossing a coin four times, is going to be included to the sample space. Okay? Now I'm going to figure out what is the probability of this B, event B, which consists of the four H's. Okay? So what I have to do is I need to divide the number of the cases inside the B to the number of the cases in the H, uh, in the omega, sorry, right? So the number of the cases in the B, which is like one, right? Because there is only one event, one item in the event B. Divided to the number of the items in the omega. So how many items in the omega we have? Two and the power of four, right? Yes? There are four boxes. For every box, you can have two different options, right? It's going to be 2 in the power of 4. So the probability that B of N happens is 1 over 2 in the power of 4, okay? So what is the conclusion from this formula? The conclusion from this formula is that you don't need to describe the sample space in order to calculate the probability. What you just need to know is the number of the items in this sample space, right? Here. I, I didn't write down all of the items there in the sample space because I don't simply need them. I just need the number of the items in the sample space. And the combinatorial analysis is the tool which helps us to calculate the number of the items in the different sets. For example, in the sample space or in the event space and so on. Okay? So that is why we need the combinatorial analysis in order to calculate the probability classically. But obviously, this is not the only way of calculating the probability. Say so we can calculate the probability using so-called empirical way. And all of these cases we're going to discuss in our next lecture. It is going to be in the lecture 2.2.
Okay. Thank you for your attention.